All right, I'm never sure when this starts, but because it, it says preparing, but then it's always a little already doing it. Um, so welcome to Jen's Pen Live. We're here with Patrick Sullivan. Um, Patrick, let's just get right into it. Can you give us a little bit of your background? Well, the whole background? The whole thing, because it's freaking fascinating. <laughs> I mean, it's a lot of different things. I have, I've had a lot of different adventures in life. So that, I know. <laughs> That's I asked for you here. a long, long time and I had a couple different companies that I sold in computer world for different things that would bore most people about what I did for that. Um, but I didn't get into real estate stuff until the, the crash started happening. And really? Then, yep. Yeah. I never, I didn't even own my own house until after the crash. I'd always rented. I just never cared. Wow. Yeah. Oh. And then, um, started buying things, had a bunch of rentals, kind of get rid of those things, became an agent, start, uh, realized that I hate being an agent and <laughs> ran a team and a bunch of other things. And I don't really do that anymore. Um, but then wanted to get back into long hold investment things, but I didn't really want to have regular tenants because there are just too many issues with them and started like poking around for different things to do. And we were really close to starting um, student housing projects. And we actually looked at doing like new builds for them and a bunch of other things because we were trying to like mitigate our risk and still do things. And somehow I really kind of hate myself about it. I have no idea how I ran across sober housing. It just happened i saw it somewhere i started looking into it it really stuck and now we're just doing basically all of that you know, that's, well, that's my main thing that we do now right right you're, i mean you you're killing it right now are mean, you've only been in it for like what two years or one year one year one august year of, yeah, august of last year and when we close and the buildings were in pro progress of buying right now we're actually be the largest sober house in the, all of new england this year how many doors will you have do you know uh it will be it's 300 and something i forget exactly how many that's crazy that's amazing let's talk about a little bit about you have so many different interests i want to get to know you personally a little bit mm -hmm. so i mean you i can see the balloons behind you yep um you do a lot of hot air ballooning that's amazing you you break world records all over the place right i'm planning to break some i have not broken any yet okay so all right so what are the world records now. that you're planning to break uh, some of them are funny things just because I looked up like what all the current balloon world records are and some of them were just like the world's highest recorded song and some other <laughs> silly things like that you know so I'm just going to be involved in that but uh, one of the some of the interesting ones we're going to have a guy escape out of a straight jacket from the bottom of the hot air balloon at like 10,000 feet we're actually doing that on a reality <laughs> show pretty soon oh god um, wow you're gonna... a reality show yep yeah I was because I, I was talking to some friends and I was looking around and I ended up um, getting put into contact with somebody who's going to be the host of a reality show for magicians. And he's like, yeah, it'd be awesome. We should do that on the show. I'm like, yeah, let's do that. And I forgot to mute my office phone. That's fine. <laughs> I forgot to mute a bunch of things. <laughs> oh, and the other office phone I'm just going to ring anyway. Um, so yeah, I just happened to get thrown into that. So we're going to go out to Las Vegas and find some lunatic magician who wants to hang from underneath the balloon and Escape from a straitjacket at 10,000 feet. Wow. 10,000 feet. That's crazy. Yeah. So, um, sorry? Yep. Yeah. It's just an interesting, crazy thing. And you're planning on uh, not sailing. You're planning on ballooning over the ocean soon. Mm -hmm. Yep. To go from Maine to England. That's so cool. That's so cool. And, and it's going to be a boat, right? <laughs> Your uh, basket's going to yeah, be a boat. Yeah, the basket is basically a boat just in case. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, you never really talk, know exactly. Right. Like just to be safe. Yep. Oh, that's awesome. Um, so let's talk a little bit about your, your sobriety houses then. So what's, what is the requirements? What, what exactly are you doing? What do, what do they take care of? The requirements for the people that are in them? Yeah. Uh, so basically they had to have gone to some kind of a um, treatment program in some fashion, whether it's a detox or rehab or um, just about anything. We're not really too particular as long as they go to some kind of a thing. So we don't take people that are right off the street just right. because people that come right in off the street um, have it's way too high of what's called a recidivism rate, basically relapsing. Right. Um, so they have to go to some kind of a program and then essentially they move in with us and it's a safe structured living environment for them where we kind of take care of all the basics for them and pay the utility bills and things like that. And 
Mm-hmm. But there's a lot of accountability where they have to be home at a certain time. They have to you know, do certain chores, keep, you know, pick up after the house. And it's all just general living things. But it's something that a lot of these people just like aren't used to doing because they just don't realize that you should mop the floor in the kitchen and stuff like that sometimes. Right. Right, right. So what it, what do you, you provide a safe place for them? It's really nice. I know that you, you pride yourself on providing like a nice place for people to live mm-hmm. where they want to, um, they want to actually keep it well. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of sober houses and uh, not all of them, but there are quite a few of them are just very bleh. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Because, well, a lot of sober houses are built by people who got, who are in recovery themselves uh, which is almost all of them. It's, it's mm. got to be at least 90, 95% of them are people that were in recovery. They got out and they decided they want to try to help other people and they managed to rent a house or sometimes they bought one and they just kind of scraped together and, you know, managed to do it for the mission of helping people. Whereas uh, we're essentially doing the same thing, except I was a real estate person. I understand the, that whole part of it and the business side of things a, a lot better Right. You know, so for us, it's a lot easier to go and I just go and buy 30 beds, you know, whereas a lot of people that are doing this, like have a hard time because they're just trying to scrape together and help people for the, just for the cause of helping them. Right. Of really understanding like the business back end of it as well. Right. So unable to do as much as, as you can do with them for them mm-hmm. really. Yeah. That's and awesome. really, and some people kind of get mad at me about it because I run it as a business, you know, mm-hmm. but. We're trying to help people just like everybody else. We're actually a lot stricter than a lot of the other places. And I think we actually have a higher success rate overall, but by running it as a business, I still, I charge the same rent that everyone else charges. So the cost to the end user is the same, mm-hmm. except I'm exploding. I'm building more and more as fast as I possibly can, you know, and I'm helping now 300 people at a time, whereas all these, like there are places that have been open 10 or 15 years and they just opened the second house and they've got 25 people total, mm. you know, so really operating as a business is actually far more helpful to the end person, as long as you're actually caring about the person, right? There's some places where people are purely doing it for the money and they are just, they don't care. They don't test people. They don't check up on, on things. They just, as long as they get their rent, they don't care. We're, we're not like that. We are, we're very about the rules. You have to follow the things you have to do your program and, you know, do what you're supposed to do. So what, do you have services that come to the house? Like, are there, are there meetings? What, what's going on? Uh, no. So we have um, a house meeting uh, in general, and then we have some people that come by and do um, AA meetings, what they call big book meetings and things like that. Uh, we ourselves don't provide any of those services, but we would provide the, the means for other people to come in and do them. Oh, that's cool. So what else do you think sets you aside from the other places? Like as far as what, what you offer? Um, I mean, most of what the, the difference between what we offer is really only two things. Our place is nicer than pretty much everybody. There's very few places I've seen that are even the same quality as what we do. Um, and we just keep accountability to a hundred percent all the time. You know, you, know we, you come in, you agree to do what you're going to do. And as long as you do that, everything will be fine. If you don't, then, you know, there, there's issues with it. And a lot of mm-hmm. people will just give people a chance after chance after chance and, you know, unfortunately, like, you know, we can only help the people that want to help themselves. If they don't want to right. help themselves. There's nothing we can do. Right. People will take advantage if they're, if they're allowed to do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we have, like, I could sit here all day and tell you ridiculous stories of people taking advantage of other people or convincing family members to pay their rent for them, or like literally just like extorting grandma who like, barely even knows that she's there. Mm-hmm. You know? And then we get like angry phone calls later from their person's mother and be like why did grandma pay this grandma literally doesn't even know like her name half the time i'm like i don't know kid called with a credit card he paid it but you know he didn't see a problem of you know essentially stealing money from his grandmother who barely knows that she's there all the time unfortunately things like that happen to some of these people yeah yeah but i mean especially having a great place like yours like nice it's um people are gonna that's gonna make people want to be able to stay so probably keeps them keeps them on track more a lot of them do because a lot of them really want to be there they don't want to leave and unlike a lot of places we don't really have a time limit there's lots of places where you can only stay for three months or six months or something like that Mm -hmm. and again that really kind of comes back to 
it's not an issue with the person. It's that they need the bed. They're like, you've been here for six months. You're on the right track. We need to help more people. Whereas with us, we're like, you've been here for six months. If you want to stay longer, great. We're going to go buy another house. <laughs> right. We just go buy another house. And we just fill up that one. We fill up another one. Um, so the, the four buildings that we're buying right now total 130 something beds. We, they're already half gone. We don't even own the buildings yet. Wow. And literally like half of them are already gone. Well, one of them is a huge mansion, right? Uh, the mansion is something else that we're trying to get going, but that's not one okay. of them that's in process right now. That's yes. still like in the wayside. In the, okay. Because I've seen pictures and that thing is amazing. That'll be really cool to mm -hmm. get that going. So tell me about the buildings you're about to, uh, about to acquire. Uh, so one is just a lodging house in Lemonster. Mm -hmm. And um, we actually have a, a detox facility who's just going to be using that for all their outpatient uh, treatment stuff. You know, so they're just essentially renting it from us to, to operate the thing. Oh, wow. Um, the other one is a 17 unit apartment complex in Worcester. <laughs> That's so cool. So people actually will have apartments to stay in rather than just like a boarding house. Yep. Yeah. So, and there's a range of things there from like four bedrooms down to um, studio apartments there. So it's going to be sort of like a, a transitional thing where the further along and sobriety you can get and the more that you can trust yourself to you know not mess up on things you essentially get a smaller and smaller unit where eventually it's just you and one other person that gets to stay there oh that's so cool that's so cool is there um anything else you can tell us about the uh the sorry uh what is it called it's called um sobriety well i'm sorry the name the sober housing sober housing yeah no so sober housing um yeah so um, what else can you tell us about it? Um, I don't know. I mean, like there's a lot of things about it. You know, we came into the thing uh, very different than a lot of other people because I was, since I was in IT my whole life, thing, everything to me is about systems and how to do things and procedures and everything's got to be the same way about everything. So mm -hmm. we spent about two years researching everything, okay. trying to decide like how we want to do things, what we should do, going to conferences and you know, investigating all the, the ins and outs of everything and talking to other people that ran other sober housing and basically figuring out which things worked well, which things didn't seem like they made sense and sort of writing a thing. And then I don't think I have it on my desk. We have a, we wrote like a 200 page book on how to run a sober house. Oh, wow. Uh, because we want, we knew from the very beginning that we wanted to have a lot of houses. So mm -hmm. we want to be able to say, Hey, you're the manager of this house. Here's this book run the house and obviously they get more training than that and things right. like that but right uh but the, anything that goes wrong or anything that's happening they can just reference the book and even okay. though, when you move into a house the people that move in get about i think it's about a 30 page book and it's it's not just the it's all the rules of the house but it's a lot of other things as well it's like what what you should do in emergencies and like how you should answer the phone and you know, like where to send your mail and how to address the things properly. It basically just answers every question that, you know, like the Wi-Fi code and all kinds of other simple things like that are in it. So it's all taken care of. You've got like, it's basically an employee handbook. Yeah, exactly. So, because there's so many people in our buildings that we only get really large buildings. So our smallest building has 33 people in it, you know, and there's unfortunately a fairly high turnover. And then some of it's people just end up relapsing and they go back some people just disappear some people just kind of move on and move in with somebody else or you know they just go on to the next step of life and when you have that many people you know we have someone coming in or going pretty much every week there's at least one person sometimes we have 10 you know because it's just how it kind of goes sometimes mm -hmm. you know so just that that kind of onboarding because it's not like a regular apartment you know a lot of people move in and they show up with a backpack we have people right. not show up with anything you know, just just themselves what's in his pockets yeah wow. he's like that's what i'm wearing and i got a phone and a phone charge in my pocket you know no id no wallets no bank accounts no change of clothes just that's it's, what he has wow yeah. wow but someone showing up with a trash bag or two is pretty average every yeah. once in a while we get somebody who like moves in if everything they've ever like touched in their life and they've kept it all you know but a lot of these people unfortunately like have lived on the streets or they've been bounced right. around or they had so we've had some people that have had massive, massive drug problems. Um, right. And sometimes like we have a guy that just moved in who, who's been in prison for like 40 years. 
you know, and wow, the dude's like 70 now and he's on some program where it's like he has severe health issues now. And like the guy is like not a threat to anyone. <laughs> he, he couldn't possibly be a threat to anybody. Um, but he just needed a, a place to, that was safe and sane. And he just moved in. But he literally showed up with what the prison gave him on the way out. Wow. So like his original belongings and. I mean, it was just like 40 years ago. I doubt like any of it even fit him. <laughs> the stuff, right? Yeah, I mean, he was in his early 20s when he went to jail and now he's like 70. So. Wow, that's going to be a serious transition. Yeah. Or actually, yeah, that would be even more than 40 years. I mean, about that. I forget exactly what the details were with him. Right, like 50 you know. or 60 years. Yeah. But, you know, there's just the whole range of things that can happen with different people for different situations. You just never really know exactly what, you know, we're going to get. That must keep it interesting. Yeah, I mean, there's always a lot of different people. You figure out the people that want to be there really quick. A lot mm -hmm. of the people don't want to be there. We get a lot of people that just show up and they're just looking for a place to live. And we, we're really straightforward to people that we're just not a place to crash. You know, you're not going to sit at the house and do nothing all day and blow off every meeting. Like the purpose of being there is to try to actually maintain your recovery and, you know, progress and things and, you know, move on with life and kind of go to the next thing that you're supposed to be doing. So you're actually really helping people as opposed to just some of these places where, you know, you can just come and go as you want. Yeah. And there's a couple different ways that people do things for this, where some people, they're just purely in it for the money. And I've seen some houses where they literally shove so many people, they put bunk beds in hallways. They just jam stuff in garages. They don't care. They just like cram a hundred okay. people into this little house and just get the money. And those people don't care at all. They don't, they let everybody do it. They're basically flop houses that they're claiming to be sober houses so that they can right. claim exemption about things. Um, but then there are also people that really want to help. But even the people that really want to help, there's two sides of there's the people that like us that we want, we want to help, but you have to want to help yourself. And if you don't want to help yourself, we don't, we don't make you, you have to want to do it. We can't force you to do it. Right. And then there's the people that want to help everybody. And we're much more of the tough love side of like, we're here to do it, but you got to want to do it. Like right. you know, um, a, a common thing in a lot of houses, when I don't want to say common, but I've seen it quite a few times where if you're in the house and you end up testing positive for some kind of drug, um, it's almost always heroin or meth. There's very few people that really do a lot of other things in our houses. That's That accounts for probably 90% of everybody in our places. Um, they just be like, oh, like essentially like you really promise not to do it again. Like, really? Like, you sure? And people are like, yeah, no, I won't do it again. And that's fine. They just continue going on. We're right. like, that's not going to fly. You can't that doesn't work. <laughs> right. You know, where, um, and then there's also some places where they just say like, oh, you're out. We're throwing you out right now because you failed. You know, that doesn't really help either because then you're not giving the person a chance. Uh, so when people fail drug tests in our place, uh, we just give the opportunity, like you can go back to detox, you can go back through the program, we'll even drive you there. And we have stupendous relationships with every uh, drug treatment place there is, you know, so even if you if you called everywhere to try to get your brother a bed and be like, nope, we're full, I could call and I could get your brother a bed in an hour. Um, because they always reserve beds, they don't tell anybody that but like all of them keep a bed or two open all the time for people like us for other facilities and things like that. Right, because you got that strategic partnership where you're helping each other out. Yeah, because like, like we call, be like, look, we got this guy, there's bad stuff happening. We need to get him out of the house because as soon as a person is like that, they may become a, like a toxic thing to the rest of the people in the house. Right. We've had things where we didn't catch somebody right away and it went on for a couple of days. Then all of a sudden, a couple of days later, their whole room was gone. Then like a day or two later, their whole floor was gone. Oh you know, it's like those things can spread really fast. And when you really give fast. people chance after chance, you don't have any accountability for it. That kind of thing happens a lot. Right. You know, so which is like, you, know, you have two options and both of them, you know, involve you leaving the house right now. You can either go to detox and you can go do that, you know, and go through the thing and you're welcome back and we'll start over again, or you can go wherever the hell you want. And I don't care. Right. You know, so right. like, yeah. And it just helps them. Like you need to go to detox. That's it. You know, you obviously didn't have the willpower or whatever it is to stay off of drugs, you know, and you did it. So you understand yeah. shit happens, but you know, clean you it gotta, up. It's your responsibility. You to right thing. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And it's true. I mean, it's, there's, there's really no truer statement that then you can't help someone until they want to help themselves. Yep, exactly.
No, but a lot of people do not share that opinion of us. There's a lot of people, because again, a lot of the people that were in it were people that were in recovery or still are in recovery, you know, Mm -hmm. or had really bad problems themselves. They want to try to get everybody, you know, and we're trying to do that too, but no. But you got to do it in a way that is actually sustainable. Because like you just said, one person comes in and you're like, oh, okay, it's fine. And then the next, next day, the floor is gone. Yeah. But like somebody comes home and they're like, you're high out of your mind on heroin. You just tested positive for it. We need you to go to detox. And they're like, screw you. I'm not going to detox. Like, what am I supposed to do? I can't let right. that person stay in the house. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, f- even just for the better, the, the best of everybody there. Mm-hmm. Yep. That, exactly. That's really cool. I think that's the, that, I mean, maybe people have a problem with that, but that sounds like the best way to handle it. I mean, there's no good solution, right? I mean, other than where you really want. <laughs> no. But to us, we're just like, we're trying to help as many people as we can. And if, right. like, if they don't want to help themselves, I, there's someone else that takes their bed sometimes an hour later. Oh, wow. So, you know, and that person might actually want to help themselves. So, so a lot of people look at it as, you know, I can't let this person go because I need to help this person. And we're mm-hmm. like, this person doesn't want to help themselves. Give me somebody who does want to help themselves. Yeah. So right. Because yeah, help that person. absolutely. That makes so much sense. And we give these people every chance in the world, but it's, it's not the, the freeloader chance, you know, they're not allowed just to say like, Oh, I promise I won't do it again. Cause I mean, a lot of people that are addicts are also basically professional liars and manipulators about everything. Right. Of course. Of course. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. And I mean, it, it, and it is teaching personal responsibility on top of all of that, right? Rather than mm-hmm. just like, okay, you can get, a, get, get away with whatever you want because, you know, you've got this problem, you've got this disease. Like, no, the only way to get through it is actually to take responsibility for yourself. So if you're not going to do that, yeah, make way for someone who does. Yeah. And we've kind of gotten the reputation of a lot of people, like like the, the, the word on the street about us is that we are the, the really strict place mm-hmm. you know, that we don't put up with anything and like the rules of the rules and our rules and our whole handbook for the people is actually on our website and anyone can just go download and look at it. You know, so it's not like this crazy thing that we hide from everybody. Right. Like you are actually trying to help people like here, this is what our, how we found our success and this is, you can do this too. Yep. Yep. And I know for a fact, uh, some other sober houses have like stolen our handbook and things like that. I'm like, yeah, whatever. Like, I don't care. It's, it's not like, it's something we hand everybody when they walk in the house anyway. It's not like I can. Right. It. right. Yeah. And really it's, that's the kind of thing that unfortunately there's no shortage of any of it. So it's not like they're taking away all of our people and right. It's not work. Yeah. Yeah. You know, as fast as we open these things, you know, they fill right up. So. Right. Because there's, yeah, there's, especially in this area, right? There's so such a high demand for it. Mm-hmm. That is so cool, Patrick. That is so cool. Um, so if people wanted to get in touch with you guys and maybe check, check one of your places out, how could they do that? Um, if you go to our website, obtainablesobriety.com, um, there's a phone number on there and um, you can just go to the dial by name thing and you can reach me on there or you can email me, Patrick, at obtainablesobriety.com. Is probably the easiest ways. Cool. Awesome. Um, is there anything else that you'd like to share? Um, no, not really. I think you kind of okay. went over like the, the basis of all those things. Cool. Yeah. I, Cause that was, that, I think it's amazing that it's, I mean, it's not just, okay, I want to help people. You are, you have a very practical, straightforward way of helping people like the, the most amount of people, the largest amount of people that you possibly can at once. Right. Mm-hmm. I think, I mean, that's a pretty, pretty awesome system you have going yeah yeah and it just seems to to us it's helping as many people as we can and really by trying to make as much money as humanly possible off of it while still charging the same amount of rent for the people because it's not like we're only helping high-end people right we get to buy more houses and we get to buy more beds you know we get to have nicer you know finishes and all the houses and all the, the things yeah like we literally have parole officers and things that come over the house to drop off people and they said that like our sober house looks nicer than their apartments do (laughs) and that's i mean that's it's yeah i mean i think that there's some there's a lot to that axiom it's like the more people you help the better you're going to do in a business you know what i mean because you have it organized so that it's it's efficient and you know you you know what you're doing on the business side so you can open these places but also like you said it's like a nice place it's not like these other places where people don't really know what they're doing or you know are trying to save cut corners and save on this or that um 
like you're making your money and yet you're providing like a nice place to live. Yeah. And we've had a lot of people kind of come in and um, older people that have, you know, been in recovery for 20 or 30 years Mm -hmm. and they just love our place and they love everything. So they said like, oh, when they went through that, they went to this place and it was just a dump. And a lot of it is environmental. Like, right. You know, like some of these people like legitimately lived under a bridge, you know, like last week, even like, it's crazy. Like how many of these people were, were like living in parks homeless, you know? So if they move into like something that looks just like the flop house they're used to doing drugs in, it's not really helping anything. Right. So they come to our place and it's like, everything matches. It's not all nice furniture. Like there's granite in the kitchen and stainless steel appliances and things, you know, which realistically doesn't even cost that much more when people look at that. Like everyone should put granite countertops and things like that. Cause it costs more now, but it lasts forever. Right. You know? Right. You're so just like, going to have to makes, replace that. Yeah, it financially makes sense to put granite in anyway, even aside of if you want or not, you want it to look nice. Looking nice just makes it even better. Mm-hmm. You know, but a lot of the people that the way they run things, you know, they just don't grow super fast. Whereas we're going to have, um, there's a thing called MASH, the Massachusetts Association of Sober Housing. There it's mm-hmm. like, it's a voluntary process to register yourself as a sober house, but most people do it. And we're going to account for like 10% of all of their beds pretty soon. Wow. Um, and there's, I mean, wait, look, there's hundreds of houses on here. That's amazing. 180 That's so cool. houses are on here right now. And you're going to count, count, be counting for 10% of that. That's we're awesome. going to count for 10% of the beds. So, of the beds, of the yeah. beds. That makes sense. Yeah. Cause some of the houses only have, you know, a handful of people in them. Right. Um, there's some houses that only have four five beds in them and things like that. Right. They're super structured program things. And yeah. I mean, a, pl- a nice place to live that gives you more pride. You know what I mean? That it's like dressing nicer, or like mm-hmm. <laughs> putting your makeup on, you just feel a little bit better and you're going to take better care of yourself. Yeah. It's just a lot nicer to like live someplace nicer. And at the mm-hmm. end of the day, instead like we charge the same rent that everybody else charges, mm-hmm. you know, we just do it in a better way. Yeah. And, and you have people there, like you said, who want to be there and that's going to be encouraging to anybody else. You know what I mean? If you're surrounded by people who want to be there and who are honestly trying to get better, that's going to affect whoever comes into the house. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And having the reputation as being the strict people, we don't get the people that just want to come there just, you know, screw up and be like, Oh, I just need a bed, you know, or someplace to sleep. You know, like we're not that place. You have to you know, want to stay off drugs. Yeah. Well, that is awesome, Patrick. Thank you so much for spending this time with me. Um, this has been great. I've, you know, you and I know each other beyond uh, outside of this, so it's been really fun getting to know you as a person because you're really interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd love to have you back sometime. Yeah, sure. We'll do the next one from the balloon, though. Oh, that would be awesome. Except that I'm really scared of heights, so I'll be cowering down at the bottom of the basket. <laughs> that will be fine. We'll work it out. Awesome. That'll be so much fun. Thanks so much, Patrick. Um, We'll make sure to put your information in the comments section and uh, hopefully, you know, we'll we'll get back together on this soon. All right. Excellent. All right. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Bye.